Good evening, guys. Good evening. A big warm welcome. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, first of all, let me do a sound check, please. My name is Adam from Trade with Precision. I want to make sure that you can hear me. I have got a fan on in the background. If that's very loud, let me know and I will uh, switch it off or I'll make another plan. Just want to make sure you can hear me. So uh, welcome to this evening's IC Markets webinar. The topic tonight is opportunities and commodities. We're going to have a look at crude, corn or cotton. Uh, good evening, Diana. Thank you very much. Recognize quite a few names. So good to have some returning uh, regulars returning. <clears throat> um, this is great because I want to have a look at a variety of different uh, commodities. So as usual, we've got a risk disclaimer. I need to give you a moment to digest. And just for the benefit of those of you who don't know me, uh, I am based in the city of London. Um, I trade my own capital and trade for clients as well. And I'm a trend-based trader, day trader as well. So I tend to be monitoring the uh, four hour for my direction and looking for entries on the one hour and 15 minute time frames. And usually just targeting a three to one. So nothing too complicated, just looking to do, to let the numbers play out. So on the agenda this evening, we're gonna do a live chart analysis for Brent crude, corn, we'll have a look at some of the other commodities and see which commodities are looking favorable on multiple time frames. So just because I'm a day trader, I also know how to trade on the daily. I just don't look for positions as often. Uh, unless I see something when I'm going through a webinar, then I'll go, oh, put that on my list and I'll place the order if there's something close by. And then we'll also have a look at potential future price movements and trading opportunities. So um, <clears throat> what I'll do here is go across to the platform. Let's bring up the platform and uh, let's just start to sort through some of these uh, instruments. So I've got currencies on the left hand side. What I'm going to do here is let's bring up the uh, symbols library so I can go through and have a look at what we have in terms of commodities. So if we go through to the energies, we've got spots, which is just probably simpler for the purposes of uh, just being able to uh, list them up. And then we've got some soft commodities. So we've got wheat. Let's just go and bring them all up. Let's go through and have a look at all of them. Uh, the only thing that can be annoying is that you get a shortage of data. This is not that unusual. And in other words, it's not IC markets fault or anything. And it just often is that you'll have, because we're doing it by contracts, that there isn't always a huge amount. And then with metals, we can have a look at, we've got platinum up, we've got all those up. Silver, uh, we have up. Okay, that's more than enough. Right, so then <clears throat> let's go through and start off with crude oil. Interesting, just because it's here on the chart in front of me, uh, let's look at, this is quite nice, Ethereum. So this is something that, for example, I might do a swing trade on or potentially if I was looking to buy, if I was looking to scale back in on my positions, I'd be looking for price. You've got this very nice cyclical behavior. As most of you know, if you've attended these webinars before, we've got the 50, 20, and 10 in the correct order. We've got a very nice kind of cycle happening at the moment, and I'm looking for it to repeat that. So I'd be looking for price to pull back into the moving averages. Even better if I can get it to potentially find some support or resistance in this area. I might even look for a Fibonacci level. So let's just say I grab this and go and look at from the most recent swing low. Look to see if there's any kind of overlap. So again, if you attend these webinars on a regular basis, this will kind of make sense to you. So I've got two measurements from the most recent lows. You can see we've got a 50 and a uh, 382 and a 618 and a 50 quite close by here. So, and we've got a support resistance level that's in this area as well, which means that this area, if I kind of highlight it in that sense, if I do this, that is a very reasonable area, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to look for an entry for price. So there's two different ways in which I can do this. So this, everything I'm talking about now, I can go take across to the commodities. It'll be the same principles. But I'm just showing this because I was talking about how I might do uh, swing trades, and this is just one that I might actually have a look at. So I'm going to be looking for a green candle. Ideally, what I would prefer, ladies and gents, is a small candle. Okay, so let me explain why. This, this is trading strategy. Uh, this is trading strategy. So here's what I'm looking for. Ideally, when price pulls back, ideally, a candle about this kind of shape, something nice and bullish, even this sort of shape would be great. Uh, anything actually along these kinds of lines would be great. That'd be fantastic. So something like that. I'd be looking to then subsequently place my entry a couple of points above the high with my stop loss a couple of points below the low. And then looking to target three to one. Okay, or one to three. So that's uh, reward three times my risk. 
for me, I would do a maximum of 1% risk on that trade, but as little as 0.1%. So in other words, if I have seven or eight trades on at the same time, what I'm doing is really measuring um, my state of mind. This is something that a lot of people don't talk about properly, that professional traders don't communicate very well. Remember that what I'm trying to do is manage my own state of mind in addition to everything else I'm doing. So if I have 10 trades on at a percent each, it could be stressing me out to have 10% exposed, but I might be okay with 10 trades and say 4% as an example. So all I do is scale my risk per trade down to I get, so that I get to a comfortable area so I can sleep at night, I'm not stressing too much. And so I've, I've worked out that if I, this is a personal preference, I've worked out that for me, for Adam Harris, you know, anywhere from 0.1 to 0.5% on average per trade works out very well. If I have a three to one or a four to one, I'm still banking usually out of two or three trades, or let's say out of five trades, I'll be up two or three percent. So because of that multiple, and that's okay with me. So what I really have to do is protect my state of mind and make sure that I'm not stressing, because if I'm stressing, I will make bad mistakes. Um, and so that's actually worth more. It's worth more to not stress. Uh, and I find that I, because if I don't stress, I trade better and I make more money. If I do stress, I trade worse, I lose money. And so it, I find that my profits come from managing my state of mind, which is managing my risk. The trade ideas are the same. It's just how much risk is applied. So looking for a nice little bullish candle to form in this area. <clears throat> it's a good area because it's got potential to turn here, here, but also in the moving averages as well as a support resistance level. So that area is a relatively decent area. And I'm going to be targeting, as I said, three to one from that. I've been looking for that to be the case. Now, that's how I would apply it whether I was looking at euro dollar, if I was looking at gold, if I was looking um, at a stock, I would have the same approach. Um, and the thing is that, that type of pattern tends to work, but it's not guaranteed. Okay, but it's a high probability pattern. Six out of 10 trades on average will go on to hit their targets. Now, if I do just one last thing before I go on, is if I if the, if the there's a large candle, this is a problem. So if, if I have a large green candle like this, the problem is that's my entry, that's my stop loss below the turning point, and that'll be one to one. I can't even do two to one and we run past the screen. So ideally what I'm looking for is a candle that's small enough, a candle that is small enough that ideally a three to one is not a huge stretch in terms of market moves. Um, and the smaller, the better. So something, like I said, something small like that would be quite nice and decent. And so the size of the candle, the probability of the trend continuing is pretty much the same, regardless of the size of the candle for the most part. So the size of the candle is something that assists me in reducing risk and helping me potentially bank more profit. So if you're wondering what I do with the MACD and the RSI here, principally looking to see, this is how I use it. I'm looking to see it from that high to that high, there's a loss of momentum. So this looks nice and healthy. If you just look at the overall structure, it doesn't, there's not too many gaps, it's not too spiky, it's, it looks fine, it looks relatively stable, not too erratic. Too erratic would be something sort of like that. It doesn't look like that. There's there's a kind of a structure to it. Uh, there's you know there's a support resistance gets up there, comes up, bit of resistance here, breaks through that. It it behaves relatively well. Uh, and so because of that, I quite like this. And so I'm just looking to see. That looks healthy. I just want to make sure that this is also when I measure from the equivalent high. So if I just go from there down there, and I draw a line that goes straight across there and another one that goes straight across there. You can see that the MACD and RSI are gently climbing as well. So price is climbing and the MACD is climbing and the RSI is climbing. So that means that because both of these are climbing, the momentum is relatively healthy, which means that this trend is relatively healthy. So that's another probability or a set of probabilities in my favor that tells me that this trade should subsequently work out. All I can really do is try to get about seven or eight things in my favor out of 10, Let's say, for example, and if I can, that means that, and if I do that as a habit, if every trade I look at does that, that will work out credit to be well. Okay, so that's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. Let's go ahead and just see what Bitcoin looks like as well. Bitcoin's got its own battle going on. Doesn't look as bullish. So Ethereum is looking stronger right now. Just because you might ask. Seems to be battling a little bit here and RSI, eh, it's a bit flat. Could do a breakout, but I'd need, mustn't break below those levels. All right. Enough. Let's go on and have a look at some of these charts. So we'll go across and bring up uh, crude oil, which is XTI. So let's have a look at that one. 
Let's go look at it from a weekly perspective. Let's get a monthly perspective on this. Okay, so crude oil had a bit of a move up, a spike up. There was a bit of a double top here and a rejection. So when we get two rejections, especially when the second one is more aggressive than the first, it is a kind of a double top, that's the reaction. That usually means, doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna get a change in trend, but it can mean that we're gonna get, a, we're gonna get knocked back quite a bit. It also potentially means it's quite overextended. So this is, the, this is Russia invading Ukraine. We can see that reaction there, that sort of knee-jerk reaction. Price is gonna come back down into this area. And again, as it approaches this area, this is not a bad area for price. I'm just gonna grab that area between the 10 and 20 moving averages for it to produce a monthly candle. So how would I describe this? Well, I mean, I would say, what is, what is the trend here? It's an uptrend producing higher highs and higher lows, okay? So we have an uptrend in place. This is an uptrend. Now, at this point in time, guys, this is very important. There's my most recent high, and there's my most recent low, right? Because there's my higher low, and there's my high. After this higher low, the next highest point is this. So this uptrend is intact until either price breaks below this, really, which is actually going to be the case if it breaks below that. Um, until that time, <clears throat> I have to treat this uptrend as though it's intact. So we have to have a line in the sand that says, uh you know at what point is it definitely broken so price can come all the way down to here and then go all the way back up and it's still technically intact but it's a very long way down how's my audio by the way can you give me some feedback because if if there's any issues i will um change up the audio the headset i'll tell you what let me do it anyway <clears throat> let me do it anyway just stay with me and then we'll see if this one is better Okay, can you hear me now? How about this? Okay, how about this? Is, it, is this better? Is it clearer? There we go. Okay, All right, this is my backup. That's fine. Cool. Sorry about that. Uh, just a little bit too much stuff going on. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right now so that's still in tech this is really important because we this is something that in a way we we i don't want to say gamble on, but that's something that we rely upon in order to to take our trades to the next level so again uh if we then have a higher low and price does this and does this so now we've got our most recent low here here's our most recent low most recent high this trend is still intact again it has to come all the way down here to really break below that to change that and then usually you want a lower high and a lower low so you get that confirmation it's quite a bit of room that uh that you have to have so based on what we see now this is technically still an uptrend guys level over there we've got higher lows and we've got most recent highs up here so we're still very much in an uptrend <clears throat> and our major levels are pretty much this there's a level there's a level there's a level and up here's the level that's it those are our big major levels and we could expect price to turn in this area it makes sense to do that if it does it could also be on a fibonacci level now you don't have to use Fibonacci levels. The stuff that you must keep in mind is probably candlesticks and then support resistance levels. That's your basics. So if you say to me, uh, what I want to work with less, not more, that's what you have to have as a minimum. However, once you add on Fibonacci and moving averages, you can then find additional layers of areas where price will potentially interact. So again, <clears throat> excuse me, we can have this. We can have that. I'll just put them in place again. We'll have that. That's a level that we can see because prices, especially when it's been uh, reacted with from above and below. <clears throat> and th this area is where the moving averages are. So that's our buy zone. So this is a relatively decent area. Let's see what that Fibonacci looks like. So I'll just grab it from here. It's not gonna be that different anyway. Come on, there we go. Just see if there's an area. So I'm always curious because these become then added or additional reasons. So that's very really nice. So there we've got a 618 that lines up with, um, uh, just lines up with this particular area. Also, round numbers can be potentially uh, important in that case. So for the most part, this is a good area for me to to see something. Now here's the the rule, right? We're still in. Uh, an uptrend, but we are in the retracement. So it always helps, by the way, if you're describing this, imagine that you're, uh, if you want to improve your game, you could go through the exercise of pretending that you're, or actually describing what you see to a person in the room. 
and you go, okay, I can see that we're in an uptrend here. I can see that we are in a retracement. I can see that 50, 20, and 10 are in the bullish formation. Um, anything else that we want to comment on? Yeah, a bit of a reaction here and another reaction here. So that's quite a strong level, clearly. And price is coming down here. So the next question, ladies and gentlemen, is what candle, what type of candle do I need to see occur in this area, which could then be a clue that the buyers are coming back in? I'm, go I'm gonna wait for you to get to describe to me what type of candle should I see occurring in this area um, that could be a clue that it is starting to find support and that maybe it's gonna turn around. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that. That'll do, thank you. So. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's interesting, but yeah, let's just say, so I've got some descriptions, nothing wrong with a small bullish hammer, inverted hammer, that kind of thing. Good. All, all fine. Yes. So I'm going to say a small bullish candle. Green, I think is great. It could be a bullish red candle. So yeah, exactly that shape. The shape of it is, is the shape is important, but I also think, you know, you get these nice little indecisions, spinning tops, dojis. They're also quite nice. Small candles can be quite powerful, but ideally something relatively small. It could look like this. It's fine. So that'll be, the, that's a good starting point, guys. So here's the thing. This is a monthly chart and we're currently in August. Now, I think it's not impossible but it's not likely that August will turn around between now and the end of the month and turn into a bullish candle. I think therefore that the next one is our very first opportunity to see a bullish candle, which is, which is September. So what does that tell you? It says, well, <clears throat> the problem here is that we're not even really expecting it to bottom out until September, which makes this part really tricky because if we short it, we're in an area where it could start to not go any further down. And if we start buying, we're in an area where it hasn't quite started to go up yet which means that trading it now is a bit messy. Here's what's really cool. And <laughs> um, if I zoomed in on the daily, what would you expect to see that would cause a U-turn? So a U-turn would be a monthly red candle down, then maybe a green candle, then a green candle going up. What would that U-turn look like on the daily? Just give me some ideas as to what you would expect to see. Because this, this whole exercise that I'm going through with you is actually tradable. In other words, we're developing a trading plan that we can implement if the market starts to produce it. So what would I expect to see if that starts going into a bit of a green candle and I go down to the daily? So I'm on the monthly at the moment. What would I see, expect to see? Beautiful. Diana, beautiful. So just uh, lovely. Uh, it's very straightforward. She suggested either a double bottom or potentially... Uh, you know, inverted head and shoulders, but basically a change in trend. That's, you know, there's no way you would know that those are the words I was looking for, but actually double bottom, head and shoulders looks great. So this is what we're looking for. So let's, we're planning a trade now. So when you talk about finding a trading opportunity, remember that trades I take today could be things that I planned about three weeks ago. So sometimes it'll be a trade setup that I see today, sometimes, but other times it'll be, uh, like, for example, there could be a, a chart that's that's going sideways and it's broken out of its its consolidation. So now I can start trading it. Um, but otherwise, there could be setups that I'm waiting for. Just not long, two, three weeks. We laugh, but there could be other things happening. So here's my um, uh, weekly, which is a, technically a downtrend. That's why this area is kind of crucial, because we'll see the change in trend start to happen. For, or we'll see it happen here a lot sooner. And so this area, as I said, is where it could turn. So it makes sense to me. We could see price, let's say, do you could see a little bit of a, a little bit of a level forming here. We could see something like this, like price comes down, rejects it. So you get a bit of a, a you, what I want you to do, some of you will know my style. We start, to, we should start to see more bullish green candles in here, more of them. So where, for example, here we have a lot of red and green, we're going to start to see uh, you know, in a series of red and a green, we're going to start to see red, red, green, red, green, red, green. We're going to see more bullish candles start to come in. And potentially we might even get a double bottom. For example, we could see that happening or a slightly higher low. And we're looking for it to break above that and go into a change of trend. So let's talk. <clears throat> so we're talking about oil now. So this is the first one on our list and what we could do about it. Why we should potentially maybe not trade it for now. Um, 
maybe just wait for it to start to turn around because it's so awkward there's not much profit left in this area where it could turn around could it come further down yeah but this area is the first zone where buyers are going to start coming in um and we would you know we would expect it to start turning around so let's just talk quickly about uh, a change of trend uh, i'm gonna do it on a <laughs> i want to do it on a pad. Do, 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 do. Right. Okay. So a trend is coming down and it'll start to do, uh, these are a big move down, shallow retracement, big move down, then it does a deeper retracement and it does a slightly lower low and then a deeper retracement and it starts slowing down, starts putting on the brakes. Um, and there's a couple of things we need to see. So first of all, we do need to see a higher low. At some point, we have to see a higher low. We also need to start breaking above these previous highs. Like ideally, the, the biggest one at the is the last one. We need to start breaking above that. So that what happens in that combined moment, guys, is we, we are getting no interest below certain price levels, and we're starting to get an interest actually above previous ceilings we couldn't get into the market is now investigating um fresh highs or different prices to the upside and then we usually it'll pull back produce again a higher low and then this is the final kiss which is then what it'll do is one more breakthrough so in the in these periods you're getting is this the final turnaround possibly it breaks up you're like okay but is this a confirmed change in trend and then you get another high low and then another break of that and then you now what happens is with every time it it turns around creates a high low and every time that it creates a fresh high more and more buyers come in because different buyers have different degrees of confidence does that make sense different buyers are like i need more evidence before i join this so some guys are very aggressive some guys and girls it's it's not just a guy thing um some will get in on the break of this high some will get in um on you know on the break of another high some will get in on the pullback and some will get in on the final break of those highs so they, they have different strategies for getting in And so, excuse me, so they'll be looking for their entry points into that. And so it will gain momentum as it goes. And sometimes the people who get in here will add to their positions as long as they're confident. So for us, it's that here's what we should do if you're a newer trader. You basically would want, you could have a lower low like this, you could have that happen. You could have a higher low like this and then a break. So you, you've got an uptrend here, but you haven't really broken that low. And I would do a combination. That's two different reasons to go long. You've got a clear high low and you've broken that. So then at, uh, I would then start looking for entries now to be very kind of, um, to be more cautious, but reasonable. And there's still opportunities on the pullback here. So there'd still be opportunities looking for that as it goes. And it can still come through here. It doesn't have to find support there. It can come down to this level and then go and it can do that. But that's where I would start looking for it. So you've given it enough time to turn. And most importantly for the newbies, for whoever's new here tonight, most importantly, your MACD and your RSI are going to be doing this. They'll be trending down and then they'll start trending up. So by the time you get this low and it's still a lower low, you've got some uptrending and both of them will be doing that. So both the RSI and them will be trending up like that. Okay, that will be your clue is that that's going down and that's starting to go up and that will help. And again, that's not a reason to buy that you don't do that. You would still wait until you get like either a break of that high or break of that high. It's very important. So this is our plan for oil. So again, I would wait until I see probably a break above here, probably. So a break above 96, somewhere in that area. Um, unless we get a lower, unless we get a clearer lower high like that then it could be a break above that. Does that make sense, guys? Cool. Um, stock RSI, is it, is it a different one to this one? But if it's the same tool, it's the same, same rules. Beauty of these things is it works everywhere. Okay, I'll have a look. Sorry, I'll have a look. Um, oh, you mean this one, Stochastics. Or is there another, sorry. I might be a bit silly here. Trend. Du, du, du. I haven't heard of that one. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Stochastics is cool. It's also a very cool one. This one there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So you should also get the same thing. You should get a you should get a higher low on that. Stochastics is also great. 
nothing wrong with that. Um, okay, cool. So that is oil. So we're waiting for it to go a little bit further. We're waiting for it to start to turn around. That's going to take a couple of weeks. And then we're looking for it to start to push a little bit to the upside. We're getting some dollar strength today, which is pushing everything a little bit lower. Now, this is, um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to replace this chart. So I can't come back to it uh, until I actually really need me to. This is Brent. So let's have a look at there we go, thank you. You can see Brent is trying to stay where it is, but it's not quite there yet. Um, it's got some levels of support. I'm gonna bring on a little tool here, which is, oh, we don't have it here, to clear all the objects. Um, okay, never mind. let's just do this. There's a clear objects tool we have, which is fine, so let's list all of those and let's just go. And then I'll come back nice and clean. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's interesting because it might be able to hold and it might start to show that. But let's look at it from a monthly perspective. See, this is very attractive to me. When you get a level like that, it, 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 it's no, there's no hard, hard and fast rule on this. Um, I would like to say that markets are attracted to clear levels. Um, and so it's nice and priced about 85. That makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't have to come back to that at all. But what could happen, here's an example, is we could see in um, over the next month, we could see the market drops down and rejects it and produces a bullish candle. That's very likely. So hopefully when I am presenting next month, we could see that. And then we'll continue from there. So that's really what I'm looking for, and that should produce that on the daily. Um, okay, so basically that's it. We can short the market now, but it is higher risk. So this is important when you're wondering, you know, with traders that I think as a beginner, you always think, okay, well, it's, it's a yes or no thing, but it's not. In this case, there is still an argument to be made. You can see now some bullish divergence creeping in. You can see you've got lower lows, but the market is struggling around this area. So there's, you can say, look, I do think there's a high probability that it's, it could still go down. But the problem now is that the market has done a lot of the heavy selling and there could still be moves, but they they starting buyers will start to come in. So it's high risk. So you have a couple of choices. You can, if you see a valid setup, if we break below this again and we start to reject it, that could be a signal that it, it wants to go further down. It can't get back over the line. In those cases where I'm nervous, again, guys, lower my risk, 0.1, 0.3% on that trade, targeting three to one um, or potentially down to that next level. But then make sure that as I go past one to one or two to one, I take some profit off the table and make sure that my trade is protected. So you do that more aggressively when you know that the, the flow of the market is starting to slow down. Um, that being said, that is pretty much the case for uh, for Brink Crude. Looks good. Um, and so I, I'll watch it because, as I said, uh, on the daily, I can just keep an eye on it. But that is what I would – that's plan A. Plan A is it should start to slow down and start to go sideways. There should be some bullish divergence coming in and it should start trying to move into an uptrend. If on the other hand, and that's plan A, and it's a reasonable, realistic plan based on experience, should it just keep dropping and you don't see any divergence coming in and the bars just stay red and there's lots of red stuff, then it's then plan B is, okay, let's keep shorting. Let's just keep selling, but be cautious. But yeah, keep doing that because maybe it's going to, Maybe it's going to change trend. Maybe it's going to come back down here. Okay, so then let's go and have a look at, uh, we'll quickly throw in uh, gold. Let's quickly do a look at gold. So gold is largely range bound. So what does that mean? It's ping ponging between these levels. It's got three touches at the bottom, a couple of touches at the top. And um, there's and there's a nice rejection of it. So it's trying to, it's trying right now currently, there's a little bit of a level that this is a secret, most people don't know this, but every range often has a central vortex. Okay, so it's basically swirling around the middle and then it has an inner range. So there's an inner range, which looks like this, which is our inner range there. And then it often has an outer range and the outer range is here where it tends to break out and test those things. So that's an outer range. And then it tends to orbit the central point. So this is what is currently happening Gold is trying to get to the other side of that central point, just trying to break up above here. And then let's have a look from a weekly perspective. You've got a downtrend. So now we've got a conflict. This is a, a kind of problem that is going to come up often enough. And unfortunately, it's a wait and see scenario. We've got a downtrend here. High, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low. We pull back into this little area, which is a very valid area for it to find some resistance. And we produced a bearish candle. 
So if this is going to continue down in isolation, that looks like a really nice downtrend. So forget about everything that we see before that. We're looking at the market in what it's currently doing. It could comfortably break the low and come back down towards these lows. In other words, the downtrend could continue. And if it does, we're just going to have to see what happens here. Does it double bottom again or does it break through? What's going to happen? On the other hand, should the next candle, even this candle, break up and start to close up above here, above, let's call it the 50 period moving average, just in, above the middle, then the likelihood is that the monthly picture of the range going up is the one that's unfolding because we've got one story on the monthly and a different story. Nice, bearish, beautiful trend on the weekly. So that is what I'm going to be watching for the rest of this week is looking to see what's happened here. And again, if we go look at it on a kind of basis here, we there's our four hour. Remember how I said to you, excuse me, I'm going to just edit this one. Just going to reduce the number, which just amplifies the peaks and troughs. That's all it does. It doesn't produce different signals. So here you could see we went up to a fresh high there. And you could see actually if I carry that down, <clears throat> you can see that we got a little bit of bearish divergence there, just starting to drop a little bit lower. So um, just struggling. It's gone into consolidation and it's potentially going to start breaking down. I count this as a significant low and that's clearly a significant low. So for now, I would allow it to come back as far as this to see if uh, if we're potentially going to carry on back up. Um, but I would say a break below this <clears throat> and especially a break and a close below that probably means we're going to see that weekly chart probably means that weekly chart starting to hit a little bit lower. Uh, again, for now, I'd like to see it start to push back up above the 50. We'll see. <clears throat> Notice how the 10 and 20 here are starting to get close to the distance here between the, the 10 and 20 and the 50. It's starting to get narrower and narrower. So uh, if it's, you know, if they cross over in the 50, we could see it start to hit lower. <clears throat> and we can see this on the 4 Ali. But if tomorrow we get a, maybe a weaker dollar, we could see everything push back up and then finish the week at a high. So it is one of those things where uh, it's not crystal clear. You're going to need to let it bake a little bit more to start to see which way it's wanting to go. There's no clear trend here at the moment. What do I mean by no clear trend? Uh, you know, low, high, higher low, high, high break, fresh low. So it's zigzagging all over the place, no clear direction. Um, <clears throat> silver. On the other hand, so silver's come back into these previous highs as well. Some really nice levels of support and resistance. We've produced a nice bullish candle there. We are on a downtrend, that's true. We are on a downtrend, and so we have a downtrend on the monthly. So again, we could see metals break below this. It can always happen. The, uh, I mean, back in 2011, there was this crazy talk about how gold and silver was never going to come back down and everyone was panicking just like they did about cryptos at the highs. And it was actually before cryptos. So that was where people, the last time I saw people go crazy about stuff. Um, and uh, and then it ultimately did, came down and, you know, kind of uh, 2013 until 2019 didn't even break out of it, just stayed below that. So that's, that's a good case study to remember that, you know, things can always come back down. Um, and so we are here, I want to keep an eye on this. The weekly again produced a potential bearish candle here where I want to see how it finishes. Maybe by Friday it's up here. Maybe it closes like this and maybe we break lower, carry it on down. A little bit of an area where we need to kind of see what's going to happen there. See quite a strong bearish and candle, uh, bearish engulfing candle here, but it could find support and push back up. We're going to have to see how tomorrow goes, if it's going to follow through. It's interesting. I I have... I was expecting, I know there's always a possibility of a weaker, of lately we were getting a stronger dollar and I was expecting, and, and last week I was expecting possibly a bit of a stronger dollar and we ended up actually doing okay against it. Um, but this week I was expecting a weaker dollar and now it looks like we're getting a stronger dollar. So we'll see. That just could indicate that we're in a bit of a, a sideways market. And so it's not obvious immediately that you're in a sideways market when it's just when things start contradicting itself then you're like okay something's up so uh, again uh, on the whole where the game isn't over yet i would say that's a, a previous low and that becomes the key thing for us to have a look at so on the four hourly as well 
I'd start to see price breaking this. That would be an indication then um, over this week and next week that we're going to head quite a bit lower. So we've got this whole area to really decide what we're going to do, but it's not beautiful. There's nothing that's really that great. We could start heading back up here tomorrow. We'll see. Or we could start heading down here tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. So silver and gold are a little bit of a wait and see. Oil and them are waiting. We could potentially short it. At least oil's in a downtrend right now, but it's coming towards the end of it, whereas gold has no clear trend. Now, you can watch it. So during the day, if it starts to get bullish and starts producing maybe a very nice, smooth one-hour trend to the upside, uh, then, you know, and again, you could get a double bottom. Nothing saying you couldn't get another double bottom here and price starts going up, breaks above that high, and you've got your bullish divergence. So the, the principles, guys, are still the same. And again, it would be very smart, especially when you're in a range, guys, it's very smart to take profit as you go because ranges do exactly that. They go sort of like, oh, I'm up. And then they go, oh, I'm down. Oh, oh no, I'm up. And they're just all over the place. So it's not to say that it isn't necessarily tradable. It's just that see, in order to trade it, I've got to go down to the much lower time frames and then try to describe a scenario to you guys, which could would only happen on short notice. Whereas I'd rather give you a bit more time to, and a bit more time for the market to bake. So now let's go and have a look at some of the others. Okay, so we'll go through, let's say cotton. Let's go and have a look at that. Uh, let's look at it from a weekly perspective. See, we don't really get a lot of, now we have these shorter contracts. So we are getting, that looks like a legitimate gap up. Legitimate, if that's really the gap up we had today, that's quite crazy. Um, and so that's very aggressive. Okay, that's coming right back into these kind of old uh, these old lows here. It's very overextended even on a daily basis. So this is not normal behavior. That's okay, but this is not normal behavior to gap up like that and go a little bit nuts. Look at it from a four hour perspective. It's overextended. Beautiful. I mean, those are all trending nicely. Look how that's trending up nicely. That's trending higher. Going on to the one hour. Is this really it? Just crazy. I haven't looked at this till today. Um, and so I'm expecting to see some exhaustion come in and have the market start to pull back, certainly on that four hour time frame or the one hour time frame. Let's go down to the five minutes. This is just weird. Does everybody else's chart look like this? I wonder. Five minutes. It's just giving me one bar all the time. Okay. So yeah, this is a little bit weird. I'm not really getting much data from this. It's overextended. So if this is the case, if this is how it is, then uh, I would rather wait for this to pull back. It's too far gone. It's too overextended. It's running away. Uh, I expect this to turn around in this area. It becomes very high risk to trade. So I'd much rather wait for it to come back to the moving averages on the one hour or the four hour back down to those levels, if that's the case. It's weird. It's like it's trading. Um, yeah, that gets trading to the upside. So not really liking the look of that. Let's go through a few of these other ones over here. Uh, we've got, let's go through corn. Here we go. Now, because we have less history to work with, we're going to have to go on this one. So what do you see here? How cool is this? Downtrend, big move down, deep retracement, sort of shallower move down, comes up here, breaks that high, produces a high low, comes up, breaks that high. It's trying to go into an uptrend. You see that? It's trying to go into an uptrend. There's, a, there's an example. This is what I'm looking to see if oil will do this. If the problem is also, let's look at that weekly. The weekly's not offering a lot of clarity on it. Um, daily coming back up into this and the four hourly. Let's have a look at this. So again, you can see price pushing off this level, pushing off this level. I think that's fair to say that's a relatively decent level of support this area. I'd be making sure the price is ideally continuing up from here. So you've got your most recent high, your most recent lows. I would say a break below that is probably a bit of a bigger move to the downside. Um, we've got the high highs here. It's okay. It doesn't look super, it's flat. So it doesn't really tell me anything. It does, this is what's known as hidden divergence. This is implying that this is actually quite strong and it's gonna continue up. Um, so again, if you're not confident, you can wait for price to go up a little bit higher. If uh, you need to see more evidence, if you're not quite buying it, which is perfectly acceptable, you could wait for a break above that and then start looking for continuations to the upside. But the direction is at this point in time is relatively clear. Uh, as I said, if it starts to break below here, that's where I start to get, okay, looks like it's gonna go lower. And it shouldn't really do that. It should look pretty good from the side onwards. So uh, that is corn is looking relatively bullish based off what we can see here.
Okay, previous level of uh, resistance down here, acting as potential support for these guys. Um, and therefore, it could look good. Where's the next level up here? You just go along. If I if I'm in doubt, I can always go here. But otherwise, it's always just usually target the previous high. So I know that you want to see where the sellers were back in control, so you can kind of target from there. Um, then we have a few of the others. We'll go through these sort of from top to bottom. Wheat. Okay, wheat again. Also, sorry. Uh, is I just want to recap on this definite change in trying to do that. It's great because I can actually demonstrate this to you. So we've got same thing again. We've got sort of deep moves starting to turn around. Same thing again, move low, double bottom up. What we haven't got yet is a break of this high. So we haven't got a break of that high. That's, that's the one we really want to get a handle on. There's your bullish divergence trending up. And so you have that from, you actually have it from here. Okay. So all of these so far, it's been, it's been trending up, trending up, looking good. This is where the risk is. Because let me explain why most people will wait for a break about that one. Because a market can, instead of changing trend, just consolidate and then break down. So while it's consolidating, that bullish divergence just goes away and then it goes to bearish again. So, in other words, it could just do this, dit, 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 and then carry on down. And then this will just start going flat and down again. Okay, so I needed to break above that to start confirming for me, showing me at least a certain requirement that it is changing trends. But selling now is also very dangerous. It's basically just, it's shifting, and you can see more green candles, more green candles, more green candles. So here we had two, and there we had one. And just now we've got about oh, nine or 10 out of that. Is everything I'm saying making sense to everyone, please? Just give me a little bit of feedback. Cool. Okay. Um, so we've done wheat, we've done corn, let's look at sugar. Um, I'm just going to do that object thing again as well. List all. Just go through all of these and just delete them a little bit. It just replaces all of them anyway. Redraws them. Um, cool. So we have on the daily a downtrend, but again, this is not a strong one. A, a downtrend that does this is not a strong downtrend it's kind of you can see where it's generally going but it's very choppy what you really want is something that's nice and smooth and so we have roughly kind of got price going to that area probably actually going to about there carry on down back into an area of resistance could be another one up here but this is the area where i would expect to start hitting low so if it is going to head lower and look at this bearish move there and this is starting to slow down a bit this is starting to look a little bit more bullish so it's it's not super bearish, it's a little bit more bullish. So this is higher risk because I'm expecting it here in this area, I'm expecting it in, let's call it, let's put an, an, a frame on it. Um, I would say in the area where it is now, there. So I've matched that up with those highs and uh, and, and this area just with that resistance level there, it's fine. I probably could have just drew, drawn it in like that, right? Would have been fine. So there you go. It's a bit better. So in this area, this is where I would expect if it's going to turn, if it's going to turn, what would I expect to see it do? You don't have to answer that. I'm just, this is the exercise I go through um, of what I would like to see in this area. So again, on that four hour, I would be looking for price to start to fail if it's going to turn around. <clears throat> Maybe it'll do this, pull back, do that, pull back, and maybe that point the divergence starts to show up, and then it'll break through here and start trending down. So it starts failing to produce big highs, starts breaking below the lows, comes down, bearish divergence, bearish divergence starts trending down, and I have an opportunity to sell in this area. So it's, but again, I'm probably going to have to wait for that a couple of days away. So just reading your question. So basically you check the trend on 
daily time frame and then go lower time frame and do technical analysis and then entry on lower time frame depends on your trading strategy is it correct yes that is correct um basically what uh, the difference between let's say a, a consistently profitable trader and a master trader in terms of their their entries is usually they're looking for a, a better entry and a tighter stop loss and so for example on this four hour i might have an entry there stop loss there and so i target a three to one for example down to here but i might also be able to get an entry on the 15 minutes where my entry is here my stop loss is there and that same move turns into an eight to one and you won't always it depends how much energy you have and time you have and you know your concentration but you might be able to extend it so you're you're still taking the trade based on the same principle but yeah um cool so that's my expectation that's my plan for sugars to start to look for this to start to potentially turn around look again before it turns around it could still do another bullish setup so it could come in here and produce back in the moving averages could produce a bullish move and targets up to here maybe there's a there's a potential trade up to there could do that legitimately so you can wait until you see a turn or not or you could take that trade you could do both take the trade lower your risk maybe take it as a two to one or something <clears throat> excuse me just or you just take it as full and if it does start to turn around and fail then you are ready for it um so that's important because there are traders who would take that trade anyway and there were traders who would wait for it to turn and both are valid as long as what i want for you guys to do is if the plan as i explain it to you doesn't make sense or you have a question around it ask away guys if it if it makes sense that's fine but if it doesn't make sense you got to kind of explain it to me i mean you've got to tell me uh soybean Okay, so we look at that daily because we don't have a lot of history. So we have to kind of go with the shorter term, what's going on. So we've got an uptrend here, right? Coming into these highs, I would say those are significant highs. They, it looks fine, looks okay to me. The four hours gone acting a bit funny. <clears throat> so the way I would say to myself is the trend that we had here, does it appear as though that trend is still present? And I would say, no, it's not. So what we really have is a bit of a, the market is kind of consolidating because it's trying to decide if it's going to go lower or try and go higher so in this case i need to see it either start to trade a bit lower start go down or wait for it to go back up to the top potentially and trade it up and again very aggressive you could go to that 15 minutes so let me show you this go back to that four hour if it really is truly range bound if it truly is range bound then i could trade it to the top so you what you're doing is you're taking a trade that's not crazy. It's not a stupid idea. It's just that you don't really, because you can't see into the future, you don't really know what your odds of success are. And that's something that in the beginning, which is hard for newer traders, is you don't have a thousand trades under your belt. So you can't, every trade you take, you're going, um, is this, I don't even know if it's a good idea. So I'm trying to explain to you, you know, yeah, that's not a bad idea. There is risk with every trade we take. If we're not sure of the risk, keep our numbers low until we get 50, 60 trades under our belt. But what I do want is for the trades to make sense to you when I explain to you. Range bound looks kind of bullish, go down to that 15 minutes. Um, you know, uh, what kind of behavior would I need to see here? This is a downtrend. Then it's double bottomed. Look at the double bottom. Then it moved into an uptrend and now it's struggling again. So uh, again, it's potentially gonna carry on down. Uh, it, it, you can see it's struggling there. Or I would say if I got a nice bullish move up here, then I could start to look for entries to the upside or comes back down again, another rejection. Any of those are possibly valid ideas. Maybe not even on the 15, maybe that you like the 30 or maybe you like the uh, one hour. So maybe the one hour comes down. But if it's gonna go back up to the top, that's how it's gonna do it. So if it's gonna do it, then that's gonna how it's gonna do it. So again, I could also, for example, have a. Well, I've got two hours. You can see I've got two hours and ten minutes until this candle closes. If this candle closes as a bullish candle, I've got two rejections here. So this is a crazy idea, but it's not impossible. So if it does close as a bullish candle, and maybe it closes above the high of this one, then technically I can put my entry there, my stop loss there. But then the reward to risk isn't that great. It's not a bad idea, it's not invalid. I could also take half my risk, put my stop loss there behind that and that and target that. So there's, you could, it depends on your degree of confidence, laziness, which time frame gives you the information your brain needs to feel like, okay, I'm comfortable with that. Um, then we have a look at, we did cotton, 
we've done cotton we'll go have a look at that cotton was just the messed up data let's look at oj orange juice produced a lower high but this is technically still an uptrend still an uptrend still a level of support so we have to see what it does at this point if you're really aggressive there's nothing stopping there's, i mean nothing stopping you obviously from trading it down here you go down to the 15 minute or the five minutes and you look to trade it down to the bottom there does that does that make sense guys so when you're looking at it on the four hour it's probably we've got a low high it's probably going to come down here it could turn where it is but that's kind of weird there's definitely a level here there's no doubt there's a bit of a level here price could come down here we go down to that five minutes possibly and we start to look to trade it down to the bottom so again we're using that higher time frame the four hour just to get a sense of where it's going immediately and again some of these you'd be like okay well i got that idea and i like it but the other idea i don't like it doesn't feel so your goal right now Sorry, I was going to cough there. What you should be doing now is focusing on the trade ideas that make the most sense to you. Simple ideas, like I was saying, that pull backs into the moving averages and take that. Because once you master that, you can then start to add other trade ideas. So you don't have to try to do 10 different ideas now. You can learn them in sequence. In fact, you will be more successful faster, sooner, by doing them in sequence because your brain can't try to do 10 different tricks at the same time so just uh, yeah um so yeah that's initially what it is if it finds support you could try and go up again but i'll deal with that if it breaks through here then it's potentially going to start to hit low so we have a lower high but a lower high does not guarantee by the way uh, a change in trend it suggests there might be one but you have to have a break of that and we've got coco just a nightmare Honestly, I would stay away from this. This is a crazy person. I would just stay away from it. It's just saying, don't touch me. We can sort of see it's chopping its way up, but it's not. A, there's no great trades here. There's no trend. There's no trend. What does a daily look like? Yeah, this is a nightmare. That's going to take your money from you because no matter whether you're buying or selling, it's going to change direction all the time. So that's the first chart I've seen in which I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot barge pole. And coffee. This is a little bit better. It's a bit choppy here, but you can see it's starting to break away, starting to climb. So let's look at this study, this price action for a little bit here. There's a clear level of resistance. There's multiple touches there. Touch, touch, touch. Price comes up, touches it, heads off. Comes back again and has produced another bullish candle. So yes, the fact that it's come back and rejected, that's a little bit of a rejection there, but the next candle's really nice and bullish. So it comes back, finds buyers, goes away, comes back, finds buyers again. That's not a failure. The fact that it came back to that level, I used to, I used to think that if it was a really strong trend, it would have to produce a higher low. But sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it comes back and the buyers just scale in or add more in and it goes. So a double bottom is a double bottom. I like double bottoms, I cannot lie. Okay, so, um, and that's not bad. So that now looks as though it's returning its way back up to the highs, potentially a little bit further. Let's see what we've got on the one hour. The one hour has produced a really nice bullish candle. So in hindsight, and I acknowledge this as a hindsight trade idea, that was a beautiful trade setup. Not perfect, but really good. It's You've got a double bottom here. So in other words, actually, oh man, there's so much here. This is beautiful. I want to take you through some of the price action quickly. There's a lot I can teach you here. So we have this level of resistance. We see a, this price breaks through, comes back. The next candle has a nice rejection here and goes up. If we zoom in, so this is on the one hour. If we zoom in to the lower time frame to see what happened here, we will see something like this. We'll see a high low. So the one candle is contained here and the other candle is contained like that. This little half bit of wick is the market coming down, rejecting the level and taking off. Then it comes back again. So you get here, you get one red candle, one green candle. That's a rejection. Then it comes back, there's another rejection. So get this. That's one possible way to get in, but it wasn't triggered in, price didn't follow through. This is a second entry, and I, I realized, by the way, this is recorded. So if you're just listening to me talking and going, I'm not gonna remember all this, there's a recording. You can just chew on this a couple of times. Um, that was also a potential setup. The market never really went, so you'd put your stop loss below that. And then we got another setup here. That was entry there, and that took off. And that's technically still in play. Um, and then we got another one here. Okay, but that was a really pretty one. I like that one. And, you know, for the most part, I would prefer to take some profit off a one to one. That way, I'd, I'd be a little bit annoyed by this, but because it hasn't gone on. But 
the, the trade idea is still standing. So this is something that with time you start to realize is that so far it's still saying to you, your trade idea is still standing. However, if price came up here this time, and suddenly there was a big bearish rejection candle. Suddenly it now looks as though, because here it's not really giving you signs of heavy selling, but suddenly if there was heavy selling again, in other words, it got rejected again, then I would be like, you know what, I'm out. I'll just take profit and get out. Because if I, very heavy, heavy bearish selling here would mean that this, we haven't seen it yet. It's not obvious, but there's lots of bearish selling here. And then it's probably going to push back. But right now we're seeing a lot of buying here and not a lot of resistance up there. Even though we've touched the chair, there's still, let's say hope, there's still signs that there's not as much resistance to the upside. Cool, um, and that was all of those. That's coffee as well, we've done coffee. So what is left? I don't know if there is much. TQQQQ, we've got four minutes. Let's go through these ones. So why do I not have this one? There we go, can I have this one? QQ, NASDAQ. I think that's my one. Nice and bullish. Is my daily pullback heading off? Um, beautiful. I mean, there's a little bit of gaps here, but that's normal for this. Broken above here, guys. Look at this beautiful example. Remember the downtrend? Downtrend suddenly comes up, turns around, turns around, breaks above it, starts breaking above it, starts going, starts breaking the levels. Look at your bullish divergence starting to creep in. Um, really, really nice. Lots of anyway. Very nice. I feel like I'm sound like a stuck record. Uh, starting to push through. So far, it looks good. It's now heading away. So if I'm going to take a trade on this time frame, I have to wait for it to come back to the moving averages. So that could be next week, sometime. It's not a nothing wrong with that, but I have to. Alternatively, if I want to get in on it now, let's go see how the four hours do. Four hours also a little bit overextended. Okay, doesn't mean it can't come up to here before it comes down, but it is definitely headed away. So again, I might have to be cautious and you can see a little bit of bearish divergence come in here, just a little bit sluggish, meaning it's just, it's, it's, it makes sense. The daily is a bit overextended, four is a bit overextended. So look at the one hour. This looks fine, actually. I'll tell you why. We had a bit of a consolidation here. This is a consolidation because it just went like this and that was a bit of divergence and now you can see it's starting to trend higher again. It's starting to trend higher again. So don't worry if you don't get that immediately. Over time, you'll realize that um, <clears throat> it did. It's also a little bit away from where we are. So the one hour is a little bit overextended, but I could consider potentially waiting for a pullback here and another trade. I could do that tomorrow maybe, or the four hour so far, could be looking for that a move to the upside. Um, and because you look at that monthly, we've got a pullback in near to the 50 period moving average. This, this could be on its way back up. If we go to the weekly, we have that weekly downtrend. How many of you were in my webinars where I spoke about price crossing above that 50? We had to have break above the previous high. That's one of our criteria met. We cross over the 50, that's pretty much a confirmation, especially if we close above it. And we also need a high low. So we need all the, those are the rest of the things we need to happen. So where it's probably going now is trying to target these this 50 period moving average. It's broken that. We're more bullish than bearish at this time. At some point, I would expect it to come down, but it could come down here or here. It could be anywhere in this area. It's too unpredictable. Um, cool. And so for, and then if we look at it on the 15 minute time frame, you can see it's starting to get a bit tired now. So look at the big bullish bars are now getting a bit smaller. It's getting a little bit sluggish, but it's still bullish. I would expect maybe overnight it'll come back down to the one hour and then there'd be some setups early morning to the upside. <clears throat> I think we did all of the commodities, right? We didn't do uh, we didn't do wheat. Did we do wheat? Oh, wheat. Sorry. Let's have a look at this, guys. Okay, so this is a nightmare over there. Look at that. That's a that's a nightmare. It's trying to turn around. Remember the bullish divergence, trying to climb. Got to get it break above this level. I think we did do this actually. Bullish candle there. It's trying to break up above there. So it's trying to pick up bullish momentum. Uh, so you got to wait and see on that one. And then we had. Oh, I had the other metals. It was like platinum and the other one, copper or whatever. So there we go, my weekly, a little bit coming back into this bearish candle. So it's similar to gold. Are we gonna break that low? Are we gonna go lower? Or are we gonna finish as a nice bullish move to the upside? We have an uptrend on the daily. So tomorrow if we get a green candle and the next day we push up, we could finish with a bullish weekly candle. So the weekly is still in play, meaning that the outcome of the weekly is a picture, but it's incomplete. We have to wait and see. 
Um, and this is okay, guys, because you have investors and traders and speculators on the monthly and the weekly and the daily. Each one of them is making their decision usually based on the time frame they prefer. So because if you're an investor, you're doing months, you're doing months at a time, you're doing quarterly trades probably. If you're a you're medium-term investor, you're going to be doing the weekly charts. And if you're a swing trader, you're going to be doing the daily chart. So please understand that you know, we will see how they play out. Some people with more money or more time or whatever, it just does. It unfolds the way that it's going to. But generally speaking, if you're watching the different time frames, you can see which one is winning. Um, and it varies. It's never just, it's never, it's usually the rule would be the higher time frames generally indicate where the market's going. Um, but they can change direction. That's why gold is in a range that it can break out of. And finally, we've got palladium as well, which is also trying to shift its trend. Is that right? Yeah, it's just trying to stay above this. It's got an uptrend, high, low, high, high, but it's very choppy. But that's it. Yeah, so even here, you could get a swing trade. When I say swing trade, it just means trade on the daily. Bullish candle here, entry above the high, stop loss below the low, target. Take some profit before this level because in case it doesn't get to that level again, it should continue up. So that looks good. Bullish divergence, look at that. They're both bullish. They're trending higher. Price is trending higher. That's agreement. Looks pretty good. So... So much, so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so just to recap, this is being recorded. Uh, if, for those of you who don't know me, if you send an email, because I don't know why they haven't set it up to give you a copy of the recording, but if you send an email uh, to this address, uh, I will send you a copy by tomorrow morning sometime. Okay, because it converts and uploads and does all that stuff, but I'll send you that. Um, and just say copy, please. Uh, and then, it, you can go through it at your own pace, measure every, you know, look at it again tomorrow, create a watch list, write down, what did he say about gold? What did he say about these different things? See what the market is doing. More as an exercise, not about necessarily taking positions, but more as an exercise to see how it plays out. Cause I've, yeah, I've predi predicted what I think is most likely and then what I would, what would make that false. Like, then that's what you, that's how you do it. So you come up with what the price section is telling it wants to do with a plan to trade it. And if it rejects that, You'll find that more often than not, you're right. So 70% of the time you're right in the way in which it plays out and the rest you're not. And some days, some weeks, you'll be right most of the time. Some days you'll be like flat, 50. So uh, there we go, ladies and gents. I hope that you enjoyed this and found instructive. Thank you, Diana. You're definitely coming along nicely. Um, I'm loving some of the feedback there as well, guys. Uh, and that was it. Uh, pleasure. Absolute pleasure. And I enjoyed it. Honestly, it was great for me too. So thank you very much. And I know, um, yeah, and the sound is better in the second half. So we'll try it again next time. Otherwise, I'll just do it this way. And that's it, ladies and gents. Have a fantastic evening. Look after yourselves. Thank you.